Church, we going. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go ahead and sound on off, man, because there was lessons and blessings going on, man, and we need to go ahead and capture this. Facts. The Sharp Tank. Hmm. No jumper. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the, in world. the world. In the yeah, world. Yeah, church. I like how you had sound that off with me. My That's God. live right there. I appreciate hey, you. Man, hey, that. most definitely. I got... My co-host today. It seems like, man, it's bring everybody to work week. <laughs> so I got my co-host, Duno, from the crew. Of course, prestigious. We know already. Boom. And I'm going to tell you this. Today, man, we got a... Martini, you okay, baby? Yes, I'm finding my zigzags. Okay, yeah. I'm you, getting it together. You yeah, know what I mean? Go ahead and get your weather together, man. You need us to get you some. I'm just, just, I need some water. You know what I'm saying? Because you need I'm some water. Very parched around can we, here. Can we, can we get her you a bottle of water? Saying? Thank you Speaking so much. On this ism today. What you need, church? Oh, we got one right here for you. Oh, right there. We got one right here for you, baby. Thank there you. we go. I have the, uh, yeah, we get her a call one side. too, church. You won't want to call Absolutely. one for the side. I'll take baby. this one from you, mama. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, you. church, it's all love. Hey, man, listen, we got Martina. I knew a man shit just of the game and just where she came from. I knew her resume, man. But, you know, she did jump up off that soft white underbelly. She's one of the first I've got to interview other than Mark, who runs the channel, man. Shout out to Mark like, from, man, from, from, hey, man, soft white underbelly, man. man you, you, you took care of us, church. Yes, he did. You know, what's known don't even need to be explained. Right. 100%. We got Martina today. A real one. Stomp down, mother hen to the game. Ooh. <laughs> Did you get that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we got Martina from Soft White Underbelly. And you know what? You was uh before the cameras that came on because we had told you to stop. You you was talking about uh, you know, what Pimmon and Horn did. Rituals. And what know? this ism is, like people want to know what this ism is. Yeah. It's a culture, it's a vernacular, Ooh. it's a lifestyle. Well, before you know we hop saying? into that, yeah. how did you get brought on to Soft White Underbelly? How'd you land a uh, interview? Um, I was at the uh, legendary uh, Bishop Don Juan's birthday party, mm -hmm. and he's known to give the best parties. And um, I didn't even know that I was going. I never even heard of Soft White Underbelly, first off. Mm -hmm. All I know is Kenny Red said, go in room 419 and won't you, won't, you know, say a few things about our lifestyle. Say a few things about our lifestyle. So I... Um, he wanted me to go up there earlier and I had a sweatsuit on. And I was like, no, wait till I get dressed, you yeah. know, and everything. So I got dressed straight out the bath, <laughs> went to Mark, and he told me his name is Mark, knock on the door. Yeah. So I walked in and I seen all these lights and I was like, oh, man, is my titties right? Wait a minute, <laughs> what? Is my hair right? What? Like, it was just like action. Yeah. I didn't know it was like that. And so yeah. it was no scrimmage, it was game time. Yeah. And all the questions was just straight off my dome. Like, I, I didn't even know what I was getting into. Yeah. And so they were like, watch Soft White Underbelly. And the first person I ever seen on Soft White Underbelly was you, Sharp. Oh, legend. Everybody oh, kept saying, I didn't even know she that. She's passionate like that. about this game, just like Sharp. That yeah. gotta be Sharp, bitch. And they was like, no, the age difference. Yeah. He's a young, you know, the yeah, PI. Yeah. And she's <laughs> a, yeah. a, you know, a mature, older one. Is it her son? Yeah. Is it her Ooh, son? Man. <laughs> In another world, because the man looked like my father. Yeah. My wow. father's Italian and black. Yeah. And. He looks like you. He was a passer yeah. in the 60s. Oh. Yeah, he was. He Fried was getting, died laid to the side, what? was he? Cab Calloway. Oh, and shit. It, like yours. <laughs> you the new millennium Cab Calloway. Yeah, yeah, I'm season. trying, baby. I'm trying. So back to you getting on soft white, everybody. So that's how I got on. It was destiny. It was, it was just fate because I wasn't looking for that, you know. I didn't know. I was just there for, you know, Bishop. Well, you know, and a lot of people, a lo yeah. right, man, shout out K-Red, yeah, shout out to Bishop yeah. Don Magic Wand, yes. but you know, you weren't there because you was a hoe off of Skid Row. 
You know, and oh, I think God. people need to get that that straight right now because a lot of people think that you know Soft White Underbelly. I know you've watched a yeah, few, few episodes. Everybody that goes on Soft White Underbelly is nine times out of ten off of Skid Row, right outside the man's building. Yeah, I think that's maybe the perception that a lot of people have of your guys' yeah. lifestyle. Like, you know, yeah. like the the super tweaked out. Yeah. Grown ass man just whooping somebody. That that's that's, yeah. that's yeah. the perspective, and 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 I'll be one to say that that oh, was yeah, probably know. the perspective that I had. Yeah. yeah. But damn, you know, because that that's that. real. That was yeah. big of you. To yeah. Say because that you shit, because you automatically assume that every man in that world's a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. That you're that you you look down upon women. You you spit. You fucking make them feel less of what they are. But then the more you hear people talk, the more you learn. I understand that there's a whole other world. Because yeah. when she walked in talking, she didn't look depressed. Right. She didn't look sad. She didn't oh. look like you had Damn. trauma. No. Like, like, like you've been trying to kill yourself for a couple of years. Oh. Like, and then when you see some of those interviews, it's like a, you kind of feel bad. You, and, and then you start questioning the behind the scenes. Like, mm. Mark Hart used to asking all these questions when you know she's scared. Mm -mm. It's like, damn. But then obviously when you see certain interviews, you're like, Oh shit! Like you know, there's more to it than what it's what it's portrayed to be. You know what I mean? I wanted to be a hoe, <laughs> and that's real fucking taught. I used to see my brother's bitches, and they were so fly and raw, and just I used to be like, "Ooh yeah, I, ooh yeah, I'm gonna be just like her." And then the punk bitches would be the maggots that they be mad at. I'd be like, "Ooh, I don't want to be no maggot. My brother mad at that bitch. I'm gonna be a good bitch." But yeah. in my head, it's kind of sick if you think about it. But if you're in the environment, I'm a product of my environment. Like, my dad was in the service for 30 years. He was a meteorologist. But my mom had a lot of children. And I was like that baby, like that, keep that nigga baby. But it didn't yeah. work. You know what I'm saying? My mom and dad was split up during my the pregnancy. So they didn't have daycares in the 60s. So my mom worked like three jobs, you know? And... um my brothers, you know, they like 15 years older than me, like very mm. much older than me. Um, I have a sister that's 18 years older than me and a brother that's another brother that's 17 years older than me. So you get it? So I grew yeah. up with my nephews and nieces. Like I was a young aunt. I'm the young auntie. So I used to see a lot of things, you know what I mean? And hear a lot of things. And when my brother brought my mom money and me and my sister was sharp, you know, for Christmas and stuff, I looked up to that. My my brother Rico, the pimp, he was the first man that ever gave me a ring oh. and put it on my finger and got on his knees and gave me my first emerald, my birthstone, and my sister, Jackie. And um, he told us, don't you ever let these niggas run through you. Like, he always was, like, gaming me up. Like, you're going to be hella pretty. And don't, but see, God must have knew he was going to die at an early age. Because he gamed me up. He showed me how to play chess. Told me not to be messing with these dudes. Because all they're going to do is hit it and quit it. Get something out of them. Because if they, you get something out of them, they won't go back and tell and trash your name. And then they're going to come back and give you some more money. Because they're invested. Mm. They invested in this pussy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a mind thing. You know? And it's real. It's real in my life. Like, it's real. This ism is real. Like, purse, motherfucking purse. And it's just about that. And, and you know, I came out the womb with a shovel in my hand. I, you know? I was a gold digger. You know, looking, I want the money. Want the money. Got to get the money. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. with rubbers, I ain't being no throat baby around here. That shit was like, ugh. Like these young girls, they doing that. You know, I can't judge them and stuff. But baby, don't do that. Yeah, I wanted to know. That's nasty. Martina, what you really felt about like some of the chicks. Because, you, you know, me and you spoke. And you said you, you watched some of the chicks that have came on my show. I got to ask you as, you know, a, a, a real veteran. A veteran to the game that didn't really stay down and then knew she had something to take care of. What do you think of these chicks today that you saw come on this show, or just chicks that you just see what they do on their Instagram? I think y'all turning into some real witches. Like this Instagram shit is like get you fucked up and it get you mesmerized. It's kind of like voodoo. It's like the cup. You know what I'm saying? Like on. Um, you know, like some witch shit, like some witchcraft. Yeah, like these bitches just do anything for this mm. money. Like, 
Um, I don't let nobody talk about prostitution because Rahab in the Bible, Joshua chapter two, mm -hmm. she was a part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. And when the spies came to take over Jericho, they came to the whole house because you can find more loyalty in a whole house than you can in the church house. Cause Deacon Jenkins over there might be a child molester. You know what I'm saying? But a real whole house, we ain't fucking with kids because that's when it becomes sex trafficking. We fucking with bitches by choice, not by force. That mm. are seasoned. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So, fucking. That was my other question. Like, like, see that what you said right there is like the perspective that people have. Yeah, and it's not like, like that. Yeah, no, like, that's, no, that's what I'm saying. But I think that's why when this conversation like between you and Sharp or what you did on Sharp Fight Underbelly is like, uh, oh shit, we thought it was like this, but then there's certain rotten apples that fuck up the whole game and makes the whole thing look like, yeah. like a whole fucking community is just a fucking f like you know like it's I, just I, looked down upon i've seen not trying to even people may say try to talk stuff about me but i'm gonna keep it 100 and funky i didn't see pimping change a bitch life like real pimping not these whole hustlers i mean like the baby daddy ain't shit the family ain't shit ain't nobody got no money in the house and this bitch ain't got nothing but her pussy like bitch you better you know Ho up a blow up. And the whole family got everything. She's like a celebrity when she comes home every three months. You know what I mean? For holidays and stuff. Like, pimping and change hoes life. You know, I wasn't that hoe that got into pimping and got into this game because I was molested. And God bless y'all who been through that. You know what I mean? I'm not taking nothing from y'all. But that didn't happen to me. You know what I mean? I ain't never been molested. My refrigerator stayed full. I kept stayed in the nicest clothes. You know what I'm saying? My pimp brothers had nice Cadillacs and, you know what I'm saying, nice vines, as yeah. they would say in the 70s. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it was good. Life was good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mama didn't ask no questions. She used to just get the money. You know what I'm saying? And my brothers used to give my mama hell of money. Like, that was a life. They little sisters. And so I had it real good. And so I used to see all these beautiful hookers and, you know, di you know different stages. First string, second string, and third string. Because my brother didn't, you know, um, discriminate with this pimping. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a place for everybody in this game. So, you know, you got the top-notch, you know, ones. And they can get in places where other hoes can't. Then they got ones that's on the track that, you know... That's where they're comfortable at. They don't even want to elevate to go to the carpet. And they comfortable there. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And they get good money. They, they reach in. You and know, what about the third strings? The third strings are some dookie booties. <laughs> and they come in <laughs> all shapes, sizes, and colors. Now, George, I told you you was in for one. Dookie. dookie. Now, I told you. Keep asking some questions. Church is real. No, but a dookie going. booty could be a white girl. You cheer. A dookie okay, yeah. booty could be, be anybody. a anybody. Mexican okay. girl. Yeah, yeah. A no dookie bad, booty could be a black girl, yeah. a red bitch, yeah. a mixed bitch. Oh, if you it. crusty and you ain't about your money and you just a dookie booty, crusty ass <sighs> bitch that ain't trying to elevate your game, but you just sticking around. Do you? Fucking, do you allow your first strings to interact with your third strings? Of course, yeah, we Oh, all, you do? You do? Yeah, okay, I, I mean. But we be cross-country. What you mean? It's like one might be in Hawaii, one might be in Vegas. It ain't like we all together like a football team huddling I mean, up. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I mean, like, <laughs> my thing is, I mean, if I don't know how it is. <laughs> what if the police get all your bitches? All your bitches is gone. He, you she, gotta, you gotta put him different I don't places, know who man. Do I say he's just or she's just, cause he's just asking a question yeah. and she's just trying to tell you what yeah. fucking ass. One hundred percent, no, no. I'm trying to give you some on the job training. <laughs> nah, man. nah, of course I'm, I'm sucking it all in, <laughs> sucking it all in. in. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, like, what's the like, like, what's the conversation with the third string and with the first strings? Obviously, I'm, I'm seeing that in perspective. When you put it like that, I'm thinking like the first string is the one you treat different. No, no, uh, oh no, no, okay, okay. No, everybody get treated the same, but you know what I'm saying? Them dookie booties gonna get cussed out. They gonna be called a bunch of bitches. You funky ass bitches, all you got, <laughs> like bitch, you can't even buy Subway. You know that's like oh shit, extra luggage and shit. You know that's if 
it's February and it's Black History Month and the pimp feel bad. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. No, but um, everybody's important. You know what I'm saying? Everybody play. Because you know what I'm saying? Team. That dookie booty might come across a Rolex. You know what I'm saying? And the dookie booty is the ones that run to the store, do everything like something like a gopher yeah. but they just want to be a part of an organization and you don't want to kick them out they're gonna learn but uh, I, but i tell you later on they ain't gonna stay a dookie booty forever okay okay, okay. they ain't gonna stay a dookie booty forever because we go they gonna learn so we gonna learn you okay okay so there's so there is room for elevation it is always room for okay. elevation and you that's why we always the first string got to keep it into fifth gear we can't just sit back with our feet up like you know you know what i'm saying we got to put it in the fifth gear because we have to show them an example. You know, get up at this time, wash your ass. You know what I'm saying? Eat your food, then scram. You know what I mean? Get your money. You know what I'm saying? When you first entered the game, were you automatically a first string? I was automatically a first string. So let me tell you about me. So before I was home, <laughs> I used to be a booster. I used, I, used, I used to be a booster. So I used to be stealing hella clothes. I used to put a girdle on and a sundress and go in the store and I roll the clothes up like a blunt. It'd be like this. And I put it all in my pants, all up the side of my legs and just clothes. So I stayed with clothes. I stayed fitted, you know? So the first time I went on the host job, I wore like I had on suede and leather. I was the shit. Bitches thought I was a veteran cross country and I was a turnout because I knew what to do. I was pretending. I was like, mm, had a cigarette in my hand, acting like I was grown. But I was 20 years old when I turned out. But I've been breaking on guys. You know what I'm saying? I've been breaking on guys, every color. You know, I have a baby by a Spanish man. My daughter is Mexican and black. Your daughter must be super beautiful. She's hella exotic and pretty. And you kind of look like her daddy a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Mexican. You, you, you kind of look like her daddy, Trey. Yeah, my daughter is hella beautiful. You like beautiful. that, huh, Yeah, hell yeah. That shit made this nigga blush. He was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I didn't expect that. You must like the husky man. I did, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I did. I did. Bro, because, we're all going to tell you the truth, Trey. You know? Because look at in school. I didn't deal with the black dudes because I knew that they just wanted to hit and quit. And I spotted the Mexican dude, and he had a car hit around the corner from the school because, you know, he wasn't allowed to have a car because he wouldn't, you know. But he, he, he had weed, and I used to, like, help him roll, two, like, 200 joints so we could sell them at lunch. And that's who I went with because my brothers always taught me, don't fuck with motherfuckers. They're going to try to fuck you and, you know, leave you for dead. So I used to be looking at the big picture like, I'm going with the Mexican. He the shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> and guess what? I made him black. I don't black. even like this conversation. I know, no I more. did. I had, I, you know, he used to take me shopping. And I used to buy. He's like, yeah, nigga, you hear this? Right. We one up now, nigga. Right. We one up now. Yes. <laughs> Brown boys up one. Blasio. See, look at Blasio over there smiling like a motherfucker. <laughs> right. And I, I took him to the store, bought him all kind of outfits. Well, he bought it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I picked out stuff. And I just had him fly, and he didn't talk to no girls. He was in check. He already knew Martina, my girlfriend. Damn, but, I just, damn, but maybe I need me a black girl. You was a, you do. maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. What you think about that? That's yeah, yeah. What you think bro. about dating outside? You know what I'm saying? Relations, bro, I've, relations. I've, I've, I'm, I'm open to everything. I was taught at a very young age by my mom and my dad when he was around to never, you know. Whoever bro. you fuck with is who you fuck with, hey, right? Bro, just because you ain't black like this, don't mean you ain't black like, like this. Right. <laughs> I have a question. When you when you, when you decided to get into the game, were your brothers around to for to see it? Um, they were cross country, and I turned out in San Francisco, and I turned out with this white girl and Italian girl, and they was like top notch bitches. Mm. And um, I went to San Francisco with them, and the first night I made five hundred dollars. It was June first, nineteen eighty five, on a Saturday. And the city was lit. I wasn't even born yet. And guess what? <laughs> Bitches was dating for two digit midgets. I was asking for a hundred. So that was like big money back then. I was okay. getting white girl money. You know what I mean? And I, I was like, like I was saying, I was a booster. So I was like dressed. I was like fitted and I looked like money. So, you know, tricks knew they had to pay the money. Yeah. Yeah, pay the price. Yeah. yeah. For you. You coming into the game, who was Martina before you even thought about even stepping down on the whole straw? I was a booster, and I was a mother, 
and I was a good mother. You know what I mean? What made you turn out? Um, um, I needed money, and my job at the post office sorting mail wasn't doing it. So mm. these girls I knew, the white girl and the Italian girl, they kept going out of town. They was coming up. They had money. The girl bought a continental, and I was like, mm. What's what y'all? Oh, I already knew what they was doing, but I was like, I'm about, I'm gonna go with y'all. Yeah. So I went with them, and I was going with them on the weekend. And the weekend went from just full blown home, and then that's when I met Kurt. You yeah. know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, God bless the dead. Kurt is good out of Berkeley. Yeah, he was my folks, you know, and he was a finesse pimp. Yeah. He was real cool, calm. Didn't, you know, he wasn't gorilla. Yeah. But he was, he treated me so good. Like, wow. oh my God, he treated me so good. And then he got really sick and he had a heart transplant and he passed away. Yeah. So Kenny Red, I got with Kenny Red. Yeah. And it was a whole nother ball game. But it wasn't like I couldn't take it because my brother had bitches like Kenny Red. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My brother had a cold blooded thief. She was so cold blooded. Her name was the Terrorizer. My pimp brother, Reggie Rose. And she used to be stealing. He used to be having like big old fat traps. And then yeah. she used to be teasing his other hoes and calling them flatbackers. Like, oh. bitch, you're a flatbacker, bitch. You'll never get money like me, bitch. Oh, damn. So she was like dumbing them down, making them feel yeah. like shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, and I'm, I'm And she I'm was a dookie in. booty. That's the name of the game. So you have to understand something, man. Even when Pimps got into it, man, it was wordsmiths. It was nigga, who can cut who amongst gentlemen. Uh huh. Nigga, you know you put your game to the test. You know you put, nigga, all your tools and all your jewels and everything. See, when I watch niggas sit there and want to just put it in the camera, no, nah, nigga, come put it in the streets. You might get beat. Mm. That's what's going to hurt a nigga. See, it's easy to put it on the camera and niggas want to sit there and floss and do all that extra shit, but nigga, come out on the street. And see what that shit really do for you, man. When you see a nigga ride up, yeah, you might be riding 550. But watch this nigga come up on you, nigga S63, nigga AMG. And bust your motherfucking head and tell you, nigga, you ain't working hard enough. And nigga, he don't even know what you did to get that. Hmm. Come outside and come play. Yeah. It's a little bit different, church, when you ride up, nigga, and you think you King Kong, nigga, Donkey Kong, nigga. And a nigga show you, nigga, who Godzilla. It's different, bro. It's it's, it's funny because, like, I noticed that, you know, squares and motherfuckers like that, right, they laugh at motherfuckers like, you know, where I came from or people like ourselves yes. came from. But, nigga, we had more than everybody. Yeah. It was niggas, even rappers, nigga, biting off the jewelry of how pimps and people like that, hoes and bitches that even act like they thought bots today, nigga, they took the game from somewhere. The ism been around before rap. You know how long the ism been around? Yeah. The ism probably been around longer than the Illuminati. But we have different rituals. You know, it's always a ritual to a secret society that we live in. The ism is a secret society. It's a culture. It's a vernacular. But it's a ritual that goes with it. And it takes money. Yeah. You have to have money. You have to have choosing fees to get with that pimping. For who's, for who's allowed to teach the ism? Without approval. Who is allowed? To teach the ism. Because like how you were just saying, there's motherfuckers that think they're doing it, but they're not doing it. Like, like who's allowed to be able to, like, like what makes you... You can't stop nobody from thinking that they know what they know when they calling themselves kicking something to somebody. They don't okay. really know no business or even have any business even talking about Church, all you can know is how to separate the real from the fake. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've been around it enough, man, everybody make mistakes. Church, you're going to make mistakes even believing in the people. That's why I say, man, your best game at the end of the day is you. Because you can't, you can't live like me, Jack. You can't live like her. You can't live like the next or the rest. All you can do is maybe take a piece from us mm -hmm. and go and make it on your own. Utilize shoe. it to your own. You know own. what I'm saying? You 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 can never. I can never be you, Church. I can be, I can land in the same fucking position that you landed in tomorrow, and it might not happen the same for me. Even mm -hmm. though it's the same type of situation, sure. definition, it's not gonna be the same outcome because different people. I'm, I'm treating it different, or I'm yeah. doing something different. You know what I'm saying? In that mix that I, that you did that I might not have did, or something that you did I didn't I didn't do or and it could have probably got me out who knows you know what I'm saying but yeah. I didn't do what you did you know what I'm saying we're all different people for a reason and that's why I try to tell people man like for the game itself and for people that came from it man nothing was by force 
You know, people need to understand that, man. You know, especially when I played it. Yeah. It wasn't, it was never by force. You never forced a woman to do anything. I wasn't forced. I wanted to be in the organization. I loved, I, I just, I loved it. Kenny was just so fly with his cars and his raw holes. He had thieves. He had first, second, third string. And he had fun with his bitches. And, it, you know, we was getting money in the 80s. It was like, we was just getting money. And Mary and Barry was over there in uh, D.C. smoking crack with Rashida. You know what I mean? So we was just, the city was open. The police, they were tricking. Everybody was just cricket. You know what I mean? We was just getting this money. But it's totally different now. Yeah. Totally different now. It's like these people make their own rules. And it's like everybody uses the word pimp and hoe so loosely. And he's like, oh, she's a hoe. That bitch just fucked for free. That bitch is a slut. The fuck? I don't like that. That pisses me off. That really just grinds my gear when somebody call a bitch a hoe. And she ain't getting my hoes get money. Hoe is short for hooker. Okay? Damn, I never knew that. Yeah. That's crazy. Now. I don't know now, Judge. No, yeah, no, that's crazy. You don't hear from that somebody who done did it way before me and you. hoes get money and they clean and they use rubbers and they smell good. There's whores out there that just be fucking a blunts and Taco Bell or a purse, you know, some shit What's like that. The truth? Them is some sluts, some whores to me. Why would you give your coochie for free? Like, I, that just bothers me. Like, even if I was married, my husband, he don't get my new car I want. I'm turning my back on him. <laughs> so love doesn't play a factor in your life? I'm jumping off his dick, off of the chandelier, and I'm going to do a cartwheel and land on his dick if he do me right. <laughs> I pay the cost to be the boss. Hey. Oh, I know how to freak so, him up. Yeah. I know how to do the man. You ever had that church? You ever had a chandelier? Hey. I've never even Hold had on. a house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pretty much she asking you, church, you ever had your dick sucked from the back? What? <laughs> I bet you ain't never had and that. I play with close, dick. close. He and looking at her like, damn, she do that? <laughs> all that. I never Boy, had that. I ain't never had that. A number at that point, huh? <laughs> Damn, she sucked your dick from the back. <laughs> yes, you be like, baby, what you want, what you want, what you want. <laughs> I'm telling you. So love doesn't play a factor? Love does sometimes. So this Mexican guy that you fell in love with, like. I loved him. But he had to have mm. money. He did. Oh, but he did. <laughs> but what if he didn't? Ooh. I wouldn't have fucked with him. Ugh. What do you think about that, church? It's kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I need, you know what? No, I, I, I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying I know, is, I, like, I need some do. therapy, I know you do. guys. Like, I do need some therapy, but I'm still going to be a happy hooker. Yeah. Because I'm a happy bitch. I take lemons and turn it into lemonade. Ooh. I'm not no bitter bitch. You know, that shit make you look old. That shit would rot you in the inside. You got to just leave it at the altar and keep it moving. They prayed up, paid up, and keep it moving because it'll <clears> take you down. You know, God give you only 24 hours in a day. You're going to use them 24 hours to be negative, be crying over a door that's closed, and he got five more doors open for you. You better tap into the spirit world, man. I got to, you know, I got to go ahead and uh, chime in with you on that one because, you know, I notice a lot of people get stuck on things that they think that are going to be for the rest of their life. But you have to understand that, you know, sometimes things are only a stepping stone or what you really make of it. You know, even if you feel like your value ain't getting held, man, where you at at the time or whatever, it doesn't really matter, man. You know, as long as you know your value and how you can really see your foreseeable future come fit. You know, people don't really do that, man. People don't, you know, oh, I'm, I'm only as good as what the next person say I am. Man, fuck no, that. No, yeah. I want to take that. this to the, I want to meet that. Jeff Bezos. I want to be the first hole to go to the moon. And I believe that, I nigga. can. Yeah, why not? I want to be the first hole. Manifest that shit. To be on the moon. Jeff Bezos, take me there. All that man. Bezos. From, Bezos. From I'm going to get you right, baby. Don't yeah. worry about it. That's but why I'm Bezos. here. Bezos. <laughs> and he likes that. He, he have a Mexican girlfriend and I like yeah. him. Yeah. And he goes to the, uh, you know, he goes to the, you know, the urban areas and finds smart children and give them good opportunities. You know, I like that man, but I, I just wish he would just let me go to the moon mm. and open up a magnum. 
Jeff Bezos, <laughs> man, you got somebody that's out here looking for you, church. If you thought, man, nobody loved you, hey, man, this woman right here, man, she looking for you today, in tonight, the, and tomorrow. In the daytime with a flashlight. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, you know, because people think that it's so watered down, you know, and, and, and it has become it has a, 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 a watered down <clears throat> game. What do you think of the OnlyFans chicks? Like, you know what I'm saying, the chicks that are doing OnlyFans and, you know, things like that, you know, porn. I was watching this show called Badasses um, with uh, Natalie Nunn. Mm. And um, one girl was on there, and she was, like, getting at the white girl. Like, are you an escort? But she on OnlyFans, like, sucking things, doing all kind of stuff, I guess, because no one's touching her. It makes what she's doing mm. not gross. Because yeah. what you're doing is gross. Mm. But you want to try to knock her because she an escort, or she a stripper, and she gets to the money? As long as she using safe sex, I say, do your thing. Safe sex is everything. Mm. Safe sex is everything. All that, doing something strange for some change, I don't believe in that. Martina, has there ever been a time that you've slipped up and, you know, you just being out in the game when you was? Was there ever a time that you slipped up, you know, and you let a, a, a trick hit it with, with nothing, with no rubble? Hell no! <laughs> the fuck? I thought I was, I was, I was expecting a different answer. That angle. shit? Hell to the no. I, I'm, I'm in control of my tricks. I don't let no trick just do me. Motherfucker, get on the, lay on the bed. Pull this thing out, <laughs> put the rubber on it, sit on it a couple of times. Come on, you ready? And I be looking at the ceiling like, ooh, yeah, Kenny gonna be happy. <laughs> yeah, I be, hey, ooh, yeah, hurry up. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> You gotta miss the hey, man. Man, like in my day, it was like that was shit. like it was like we always had that uh, one little filthy bitch that would do nasty uh, stuff with tricks in my day. But all the hoes I know, they was like real fled, full yeah. fledged hoes that didn't use use rubbers and and didn't do certain things. Like it was just certain rules that you just didn't do. Yeah, were you? For, did you ever fall in love with a trick? Hell no, I'd be mad when they stop fucking with me and the money gone. <laughs> then my heart be broke, like, fuck, I missed that trick. <laughs> Damn. Go ahead, my church heart be ass hard. Some more. I didn't have tears was come to my eyes. What? Anything he was curious I, of, of all. Especially if he was a good trick and was giving me good ass money, <laughs> and then yeah. he cut me off like I had a good ass trick that was giving me good money, and he went to Japan and left me, and he served me the news. His face is struck. He served me the news, and I'm not gonna be able to give you no more money. This is yeah. gonna be the last money I give you. Yeah. I was sick. What was your? And for this, a, for this, a question I always wanted to ask, um, Sharp as well. Like, mm -hmm. what was your guys' take on, um, on? Oh, fuck, what's that movie where they made Pimpin' look super like, damn, this is not it? Is it Hustle and Flow? The rap? Flow. Oh, is it that one? That was a. Uh, oh, the, when he had the bitches and all that, that shit was not that was The whoop that tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't yeah. got nothing. Listen to me, homie. Shout out to Memphis. Shout out to Memphis, man. You know, and, and culture is culture. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You know, I just think it's different cultures for how yeah. certain things land. Okay, you know so that saying? was so I was gonna be my. So each state has his own thing. I, I mean, they got their own culture. However, they feel like that they was they, just they some, that was on some third string shit. It, they got some first class. They got some and they about do. a Memphis and that's they raw They got as some hell. real. Hey man, they got that's some real raw. stomp downs. Hey man, shout out to Memphis, Tennessee, because I know some out. of the real ones around there, man. Really is moving. That yeah. shit was just a movie. That shit that was, was just, just a, a movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. The, fuck it. That's always because they got know. some shit like Let that going on in Oakland. They got do some know. shit like that going on I was in LA. Doing it before that movie even came out. So all the little comments and shit that you be seeing that might have made you even ask that question, yeah. trust me. We could dead that one right here now. Nigga, I was doing it before that movie even came out, before it was even thought about. Yeah, cause I always assume like, damn, why don't they why don't they just leave that house as hot like a motherfucker? <laughs> or why it's just it's just <laughs> What was, is wrong with you? They dude? were sweating, <laughs> and 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 my perspective, because when you read certain books, so when I was in juvenile hall, I read like a lot yeah. of books, right? Right. So there right, was right. there was books about like Malcolm X and shit. Right. When right. he did when when he was doing the what you guys say the ism, right. yeah. and and, yeah. and then and then I read other books. Did I, you read I, uh, Fillmore? Did you read um, 
Iceberg Slim? I didn't read that one. Okay. Did you read Donald Goins? You might need to read that one. I might need to read that that one. So when 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 you assume, you always assume like, yeah, there's a it's business, but you also gotta take care, show love, and provide. Mm -hmm. And then that movie just made it seem like they was all down bad. Like they need to get a job at the like at the store. Like they would do better. A question for you. Yes, yes. What if people just so happens, right? Mm -hmm. Off the whim actually did the things that we might have talked about or have portrayed through these cameras, right? Yeah. What if people that were doing things like that actually did it just to have a better life? What if we were actually doing it to try to live normal? Because we see how doctors and lawyers live. We see how politics and governors and, you know, politicians and governors and people like that, we we see how they live. What if we just want a piece of that too, but we don't got the same type of resources that they may have had? Because it seems like to me, and I don't want to get too deep into politics, yeah. but it seems like to me it's not about what you know, it's who you know. You don't have to go to college for eight, nine years, man, to become something like like that, you could be somebody's long lost relative. And as long as you was in the bloodline and they cousin grew up with your cousin and all that, and we're all family and all that, they, they bring you in. Me and you will never have that same type of outlook. So that's why you're like, damn, you know why do certain people do what they do? We know why we do what we do, man. Yeah. Even when you might not always understand it. 100%. You know, like. Oh my God, that's why I call him the Shakespeare of this Even ism. when you might not always. Yeah, yeah. So you're you asking me, yeah, yeah. So you're as your question is basically like, what do you feel about people do what you guys do yeah. and have done? Yeah, and and, and have done. Because I'm retired. Do. I'm yeah, done. Yeah, no more. yeah, yeah. I like, think I'm just speaking on it. I'm retired. Yeah. I'm I think just like I think like even like example like I think the bro for every game there's gonna be a rod and apple that's gonna make everything look bad. Yeah. How I said the example earlier, I remember like. I remember like Chubb always used to say about Mexicans, like they're drug dealers and they're right. rapists. And I'm like, motherfucker, my mom work hard. Yeah. Right. My mom clean houses and right. she work hard. Right. Pays right. her right. taxes and and uh, and then shit like that. And then you know what I mean? I think I just think when you I was taught to never look down upon them but what anybody right. does there you go do you 100 percent have there to agree because 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 look because look i'm gonna keep it a book i was raised by only woman i was raised by three older sisters and a single mom so when when i back when when somebody mentions pimping you think about a motherfucker just slapping a bitch and telling her what to go do right. and it's like motherfucker i wish a motherfucker would slap my sister like right. that yeah. or my mom well when you think about you can say the same thing for yeah. a hoe when you think yeah. about a hoe you just think about her being a slut and she's yeah. just yeah. flat back yeah. and then she's just laying it down and she don't really care if she had a condom that day or not exactly but that's not necessarily true exactly so true so i just think I ain't gonna lie, I think motherfuckers like you are needed in the world to talk about yes. what you guys call the ism, right? Yes. Because it's just like, it's like I was saying, when when you think about something, you think about, you see certain movies, like I even seen the Medea movie when the girl was, she was like the prostitute and she's like, she hates it, she's crying while having sex and you think, well motherfucker, that's nasty. That is. That sucks, bro. Like, right. how, how could a motherfucker feel good right. about himself Telling a bitch to go fuck some motherfucker that's gonna rape her, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, yeah, yeah, and then, that's understandable. And then, and then that's when understandable. you see like, even like the movie we were just talking about, mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, well at least if you are like, how are you there? You sweating? You in a dirty ass house? And then, no, not looking down upon Memphis because I'm pretty sure the movie would just portray like that or whatever the situation mm -hmm. is. Right. But you do feel bad. But when you learn or when you hear conversation, when you understand people's life and you open your eyes to not just yourself. Or just your universe, but everybody else's universe. You're like, oh, okay, I fucking get it. Like, I mean, I, I might not agree, Damn, or, or, or 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 I might not hundred percent agree. Like, like if I was being honest, I'm like, what well, damn? I'm like, why didn't you just try to move up at the post office, right? And shit like that. But uh, but then when you, she that talks about check it, come yeah. every two weeks, and it was yeah, yeah. crappy. <laughs> yeah, you know, but that's like nigga telling you to leave no jumper right now. Nigga, go work in produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's crazy. That? Yeah, yeah. You so doing that, you gonna go play that when you know, nigga, you done made it already easy for yourself. One hundred percent. So I you think not gonna do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a perspective you see it on. Like when you let people, because sometimes people tell their people stories, and they and they're just and they're just writers. Like you're being a writer and being a storyteller are two different things. Mm. Cause you could tell me a whole thing and I could write it and be like, right. sharp as a piece of shit. Right. But you never you tell it the same. 
I get what you're saying. You'll never be able to tell it the so, same as the, the actual so, narrative. So, so, see, but that's like, a, that's like a narrative for like every movie. Like there's, you know, like, or even like shit that, from what I know is that when you read certain shit, right? Or when you see certain movies, but I'm also a millennial kid. Right. So we're, we're, we're accustomed to, oh, that movie, it, it, that's just it's based on a true story. And I automatically think like, damn. <laughs> they motherfucking some assholes. But then when and you, I like where you at with it because, and I don't, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, because you I like how you said millennials. Mm. So I want to, I, I took that word out of your conversation, yeah. and I want to throw it over at her. Go ahead, hundred percent. Right. How do you feel about the millennials today? And like even listening to him, and like listening to him to his insight of what what he thinks it is, because he's seen a lot of it on TV, and you know what they might have portrayed to him, or what his homies have said to him throughout the time. Like this is what a hoe is. What do you feel like? I, I want to hear your get back to what do you feel like these millennials are? These new up and comings. They uh, do anything for clout. Okay? 100%. They do anything for fame. Um, I wrote a poem about the power of pussy compels, talking about the Instagram bitches and how just just all kind of deep stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, the game is messed up, and we need to make ism great again. Or get out of it. Quit calling yourself a pimp. Quit calling yourself a hoe if you, that ain't what you really doing. You know what I mean? That's like calling a giraffe a bear. <laughs> To me. <laughs> and I think, and, and, and fucking, I think. Stop being an imposter. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking, I think. Imposter, that imposter, whole imposter. Yeah, and I think Stop that's. Stop it. Yeah, I think that's like a big thing because I think if you're going to do something, I feel like you got to be happy with what you're doing. Like if the game or the ism isn't for you, which I'm pretty sure you got, I'm pretty sure you, you both seen a lot of people they not make it. the cut. Right, didn't make the cut. Yeah. Bro, you, you. You gang banged. You did all that. You came I didn't from gang a, bang. Tagger for sure. Okay, I tagger did. for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. You came from a certain circle that not everybody might necessarily agree with at one point in time. 100%. But you're still 100% loyal to it, and you've still stayed true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. matter what anybody said, homie, because everybody's going to always have their fucking outlook. Everybody's going to have their perspective on what they think something is. Right. Even if they've never touched it a day in their life, they've only seen it, like we said, on fucking TV. Yeah, the, um, society got um, the ism messed up. You know, like I said, it's a secret society. And they try to make us like we're so bad and we're so this and that. But like I said about that other organization, look at the crazy stuff they do. And it's to keep your mouth shut. I come up missing you guys, you know. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like, I would want to be into this ism. Yeah. More so than I want to be into these other societies, you know? What did you, I'm going to ask you this, Martina, what did you cling to, and in, in using your words, the ism, what did you cling into the ism that you felt like you didn't cling into working a, a regular job or doing something else? What was it that you felt like your, your soul clung to? It's just clung to getting this money. Yeah. I was just to just want to go cross country just for the hell of it. Just hit every state getting this money. <clears throat> and uh, I just had that mentality, you know, being around my pimp brothers. And it's kind of bad. You know what I'm saying? I still got PTSD. That's pimp trauma stump down. Yeah. Pimp. Trauma stump down <laughs> disorder. You know what I'm saying? I hear certain I songs. Man, I didn't expect that one. Look at, I hear certain songs. I'll be ready to put my heels on and go. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, got to get the money. This is it. Yeah. No, I, you know. That's crazy, it's, it's right? It's in me. When it's you... in me. Not on me. It's in me. I am just a happy hooker to the day I die. And I don't care what nobody say. I want to ask you, why didn't you, why did you decide to be a hoe instead of a pimp? Well, let me tell you something. I, I, I never wanted to be a pimp because, first off, I don't even like coochie. And I'm a woman. And I respect <laughs> oh, this. Oh, I, I mean, I, I thought I, thought I respect off, this ism. Listen to her, church. Second off, a woman that does have an escort service is called a madam. And yes, oh, a I, madam. Okay, okay, okay. I'm was, sorry. I was that. Okay, you were a madam. I didn't boy. do my girls bad because I knew I was up under ism. And I used to have to break myself. I mean, no money. You know what I'm saying? My, my man, I, all my money went to my man. So 
when I had my escort service and I turn a girl on to a date for $1,000, I just want $300 service fee and they keep their money and keep their problems and do it moving. Because when you take somebody's money, you take their responsibilities. And I wasn't going to be responsible. And this is a whole That's some cold old shit. school game. That's some cold shit. told you something. And the why may not every, listen to me, not every person who would even consider themselves allegedly a pimp or whatever the case may be yeah, yeah. would even want to take on every problem. Because, see, it's about a vibe. You don't just look at a woman for her beauty. You look at her for her duty and her vibe. Right. What she can vibe on you with, what she can be with you for, how she can really come and consile with you, to just really just wreck and just be on some other shit, other than just sit there just trying to be on some. Oh well, you know, I'm 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 breaking on you because I'm pimping and you're hoeing. No, it don't work like that. That shit's That's never gonna last, and it's billies. gonna be some. Uh, it's gonna be some ugly. But you're not gonna want to take care of responsibilities of a woman that you don't vibe with. You got to vibe with her. People think just like I'm gonna be real. Don't mean it, Martina. I gotta say this. Even for you, you had to love something about the nigga that you was fucking with to pay him. Don't no average bitch just pay no average nigga. Right. No, I loved his last year dirty draws and drink his dirty bath. She's water. gotta upgrade. Yeah. She can't be downgrading. Love my pimp. Love my pimp. We gonna cut this shit right, right where the fuck it's at. Cause Martina, hey, we ain't got the vents open and it's getting a little too hot in this motherfucker. You need it. The sharp tank. No jumper. The coolest <laughs> podcast in the world. <laughs> Sharpest, coolest podcast in the motherfucking world with a little bit of do you know. Hey, man, we out this motherfucker.